Properties of ionic compounds. Ions are formed when metals lose electrons and nonmetals gain electrons. Metals lose electrons because they only have one valence electrons and nonmetals gain electrons to get a full outer shell here. So what happens is sodium can give its electron to chlorine to become sodium one plus iron and the chloride negative iron. If you don't understand this, please have a look at my preceding video on ionic formation. Okay, so it's this electrostatic attraction between the anion and a cation which will form a very strong bond. And it makes this regular lattice shape structure which has got alternating cations which are the positively charged ions and anions which are the negatively charged ions. In the solid state these ions are in fixed position. So let's look at how this gives ionic compounds its properties. Ionic compounds are hard, they're solid, and they've got high melting points. The reason for these properties is the strong electrostatic attraction between the cations and the anions. If we look at the cation and anion here, they are attracted to one another. So what happens is they're attracted to one another and they form that close bond. This gives it this three-dimensional strongly packed lattice structure and that makes it a very strong structure, also a very hard structure with a high melting point. This structure is also responsible for making it brittle and I've put a picture here of peanut brittle because brittleness is about it being hard but being easy to break, okay? So like peanut brittle will snap, salt crystals can break very easily. It means they're brittle, they can still be or they still are classed as being hard. So here we have our alternating lattice structure. We have our anions and our cations alternating to form this regular lattice structure. Remember the lattice structure is normally three-dimensional. Well, it is three-dimensional, but I've just represented it here two-dimensionally to explain what happens when a force is applied. So here's my force and it pushes. And what happens here is that the like charges align to one another and that causes those like charges to repel one another. And this repulsion causes the crystal to shatter. And that's what causes the brittleness. So if we have a look at an ionic crystal structure with a force applied, once that force is applied, those like charges align and it causes repulsion. The crystal lattice then shatters. Compare that though to a metal structure. When we push on a metal, the cations will move along, but those C of delocalized electrons will just move around. And this is what makes metal hard but ductile and malleable, whereas an ionic crystal is hard, but it is brittle. It breaks easily. And here's just another representation. So when a force is applied, the like charges line up with each other. You can see here, and they repel each other. The third and last property I want to have a look at is electrical conductivity in ionic compounds. For something to be able to conduct electricity, you need to have free moving charged particles. So some charged particle, whether it's an ion, an anion or a cation, or an electron that is able to move around the circuit. So with solids, we have this shape of a lattice here. They're held in fixed positions, the ions. This means that there is no free moving charged particles and thus solids are unable to conduct electricity. There is no free moving charge, so they cannot conduct electricity. 
On the other hand, when we look at an aqueous or a liquid solution of an ionic compound, you'll see here the lattice is a solid structure of salt. When that's put into water, that will break apart. And we now have cations and anions that are able to freely move around. So they're free to move and they look something like this. And this means that they can conduct electricity. So here we've got free moving ions. And you can see when an electric current is applied, we have the cathode here, which has a negative charge and it attracts the positive sodium ions. And on this side, we have a positive charged anode and that attracts the negatively charged chloride ions. So if we have a look at this diagram here, distilled water does not conduct a current and that's because water, pure water is a covalent molecule. And we'll discuss why covalent molecules don't conduct electricity uh, later down the track. But you can already tell from this that there can't be any free moving charge because you have to have free moving charge to conduct electricity. Here we have some salt or a solid version of an ionic compound. And you can see here the positive and negative ions are in a fixed lattice position. So there's no free moving charge so it doesn't conduct electricity. On the other hand, when this salt is dissolved in the water, you now have free moving anions and cations, and these are able to conduct electricity.